on this show called Game Changer. It's a chance for me to jump into your safe, take a look and offer some perspectives. Today, I've got a really strange episode because it's not just about tactics. It's not just about training. It's about those small little things that sometimes combine into one big problem. My name, my name, my name is Daljit. Welcome to the show. This is the channel where I do content for Football Manager. Yes, we've got all kinds of content here. We've got tips, tricks, hacks, guides. And uh, I also stream on another channel, Daljit's Moments. Uh, do that three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. You can catch me there on Mondays when I sometimes dabble in creating a new tactic. For example, on Wednesdays, you can bring your tactic. And I might play with your tactic on a safe that doesn't even come from me. And we'll try and do all kinds of wonderful things with that tactic. Yes, that happens on Wednesday. That show can go in any direction. And on Fridays, that's when we try and stay in one direction, where I've got my long-term journeyman challenge. And it's, with Ernst ha uh, it's an Ernst Happel challenge that he has to see me traveling all over Europe. And I do, you know, those are my kids screaming in the distance in a room. Apparently, they're playing Rayman's Legends. Yep. There's a lot of screaming and joy in that one for them. And uh, yes, if you want to follow me, do that three times a week. I'll be there, ask away, and I shall try and help. If you want to be part of the show, it's really simple. First, the members on Discord, you know exactly what to do. There's even a link for you. You know, all you got to do is click that link and drop in the save. You know, a few couple of words, you know, uh, informing me and your the current challenges you're facing can also be a big help. Now, if you're not a member of Discord, don't fret. Wednesdays, yes, like I said before, I have a show called Bring Your Tactics. And sometimes I will ask for your saves and you can bring your saves too. Uh, and you can pop in your saves and I try my best to help as many of you as I can. Well, without further ado, let's jump into the safe. We've got a manager who's just taken over at this club. He got hired as the Aston Villa manager in 2026. The club, since he's taken over, they haven't done that badly. He took over, they were in 12th position. The next season, he got them pro, you know, base. He got them up to fourth Champions League football. Very, very excited. They've got phenomenal facilities. The vision of the club. I like this vision. Uh, maintain the best youth system in the country. Maintain the best youth system in the world. This is good. Um, I like uh, the targets that have been set. You've done pretty, I mean, you, you know what you're doing in terms of facilities and development. Um, looking at your team and the time that you've been here, built up a very harmonious squad, done well here is done. I mean, this is pretty, pretty good. Um, uh, as far as your calendar is concerned, you've got a very simple training program. Yep. I love that. Uh, mentoring. No, you're not mentoring anyone. No one is, no one says we have to mentor, you know, we have to go out there and mentor people. Um, it does if your training and the distribution of the coaches, everything looks good. This is one of those interesting saves, right? Where you go in and you're looking for what's, you know, what's going on. I'm looking at results and I'm going, okay, can be a bit better. I mean, you did finish in the top four. Um, Mid-table finish is expected this season, but you're ninth. You're not doing very well. You're a bit off the pace halfway through the season. You should be expected to be up in the top three by now. But, you know, you're not there. I mean, it doesn't help that you've got Kylian Mbappe playing for Manchester City now. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I I thought this was hilarious. Um, you've, and the thing is, when, is the things start getting a bit interesting when I start looking at finances. When you're managing clubs like Aston Villa or any club in the Premiership or the top tier, sometimes it's pretty easy to get sidetracked. And I think this is one of those saves. We, we stare at this number and we go, okay, fine, as long as I'm making like about 70 million a year in profit, so I should be good, right? But this is where I like to change things. Your wage budget was on a per weekly basis. Now, when I turn it to a per annum basis, it puts it, you know, there's something to compare it to. So I've got 80, 
If you're looking at a number here, we're looking at 80 million right now. Your wage budget is about 110. So I'd rather look at the wage budget. So if the wage budget is 110 million, my total expenditure for the season is going to be 100 million. It means that if I take everything into consideration, the the balance, overall balance of my club is not going to be like something more than about 60 or 50 million because you still got to take out money for loyalty bonuses. You still got to take out money for ground maintenance. You still got to take out money for travel costs, trans uh, use setups, especially use setup because you want to be having about one around 5 million in profit every year for your use setup to be extremely successful. So these are, they're going to be small little things that add up over time. So it's, it's, kind of important for you to get value out of your signings now this is where i was concerned because now we've got we don't have much of a buffer right so we've got about 60 million at the moment when i'm looking at your situation is about 60 million then i'm looking at a transfer history so we're looking at a transfer history you've uh done some very interesting things this season i'm looking at two players here the first thing i noticed was you sign someone who is 19 years old. His name is Aaron Diamond. Valued at 18.25 million right now. Okay. But you drop something at 36 million for him from Preston North End. I was stunned. Right. Uh, as to why anybody would want to pay 36 million pounds for a player from the Skybet Championship. Whose performances were remarkably average. So unless there is some screaming something screaming at me like maybe you wanted to sign him because his name is aaron diamond i don't know i can't think of any other reason why anybody would want to drop 36 million for this player because if i'm looking at his attributes alone at the age of 19 these attributes are very average to me because aggression is strong at 14 he can't finish i mean he's got average finishing seven Composure 13. We don't know if he's going to be a great finisher or not. He's just a winger. He can cross the ball. He can escape from players and then drop in a cross. And that's the only thing we have. I mean, he, he may not lose the ball. You know, he's got some technique in there. Needs to learn a lot more for decision making. By the age of 19, 36 million is a starter. Is a person that can start for your main team. So I was, I was quite, kind of surprised that he was spending this much money on this player. And I, here we've got Hayden Roberts. Now, again, he spent over 30 million for this player. When I'm looking at this player, I think um, like the only position he can really be playing in, I mean, at the age of 26 years old, you've dropped quite a fair bit of moolah on a player that is going to be just a bulk basic. Um, he's going to be playing in the heart of midfield because we can't expect him to play in defense, right? I don't expect him to be playing in defense. His size is 1.8. He's 26 years old. We can't get too much out of him. So we're not going to be using him as a central midfield, uh, sorry, a central defender. Most likely, he will turn out to be a pretty decent ball winner. The thing about goal, I mean, the thing about playmakers, I mean, a lot of people seem to look at only certain areas of the game for playmakers. Yeah, the game says deep line playmaker, right? There's no flair. They expect vision and decisions to be the main criteria for playing uh, as a playmaker, which is true. The reason why I like flair is because there are times when you have those really unexpected moments in the game, like that quick break, the no-look pass. These are very highly creative things that can happen randomly in the game. And I like those, but those are triggered by flair. And the way I look at it, well, fine. You played twenty-four million, at least from final. He's not as you know. It's not shocking to me as this guy we spent thirty-six million. Uh, the previous season we got Leif Davis and Ivan Frolik. Now here we've spent eleven point seven uh, five or close to fourteen million for this player. Um, he's gonna be a decent. He's a decent fullback. Question is when you when you sign defenders, right? There's got to be a reason why you sign them. Uh, fullbacks especially. Why do you sign a fullback? He's got great positioning. So he's defensively quite solid. Why are you signing them? Are you signing them because you want him to drop in crosses for you or, you know, protect the flanks? He can do both, which is okay. Concentration is 15, so it's a good signing in my opinion. Uh, and then you've got Ivan Folik. Uh, you, you sign him for like 1.2 million, which is kind of a, 
a bargain if you think that you're just going to use him as a winger, right? All we're doing with this play is winger. But here we have to bear one thing in mind. Once you start playing this game for a while, you will realize that you want to sign wingers who've got speed and acceleration, the ability to cross, right? Or dribble or score one of the three. As long as you can find them, they're worth it. So I would just ask myself that question when I'm, you know, looking for these kind of players. The game of football manager isn't complicated. It's all about, do you have a system that you prefer playing? Stick to that system. If Master that system, even if it's a 4 4 2. Right? In fact, the 4 4 2 will probably be the best in most cases because, you know, you got two strikers, you can't go wrong with that. As far as the Brexit rules are concerned, everything seems to be fairly straightforward. You've got a, a cap to the number of players that you can use, and that's about it. I mean, I don't do, there are not too many issues there. But I somehow another think that the main issue for this game seems to be the fact that, you know, you need to figure out the tactic you are happy with. A lot of the time, people blame the game because they say the tactics have stopped working. The reality is, most people don't see option B, C, and D in their own tactics so that they can't adapt over time. This is the reason why I think what you really need to do is you need to find one tactic, you need to stick with it, and you have to become really good at every single permutation that comes with the tactic. And that will be the only way you're going to find success in the long run. So let's take a look at your results so far. Your results so far, they seem okay. They're not fantastic. They, I mean, definitely you can do a lot better than this run that you had over here. And then when I'm looking at your tactics, I see three very distinct tactics. I see like a 4 3 3. I see a 4 2 I mean, 4 2 2 2 DM, which is not too bad. And then I see a 4 2 3 1 deep. Now, all three tactics require different kinds of players. Right. This is the thing. This is the reason why I always say, you know, you gotta master one tactic. Don't waste your time thinking, oh, maybe I should have plan A, a plan B, a plan C. That's all nonsense. Okay. Master that one formation, and then from that one formation, come up with a plan A, plan B, and plan C. Your ability to tweak is contingent about how well you understand your own team, and this is something I think a lot of people lack. Let's do something real simple. Let's go to. The game itself. It's got a lot of little tools that'll help us. We've got attacking efficiency. You're in this quadrant. Faceful, passive, wasteful. You first, you don't create enough chances. And of those chances that you create, not a lot of them get into the back of the net. So basically, you're not clinical enough. What you want to do is you want to get out of here and come up to this this area where you're passive and clinical. You don't create a lot of shots on goal. Maybe you can finish them off very well. Or you move up here where you become aggressive and clinical which is the dream area all of us want to be in now we're going to do a quick look at your team it's really simple just go down to squad depth role suitability 4 2 3 1 these are the formations in your debby setup in your tactics panel right? you, got, you got three options in your tactics so these will be the three here there currently then you go to roles and choose currently select the roles of tactic this will be for your present tactic and what the rules are and the opinion of the ass panel generally all we want to do here is you know Hopefully, he's got good judging PA. Now, let's take a look at your players. Most of you, these are the players in your team. This, they're not comparing, oh, he's got four stars. He's the best in the land. No, no, no. This is compared to the rest of the players in your team. Question is, how good is your depth? So, deep line four, this is a striker that you want you have in the team. And he is one of the best in your club. Brian Brobery, is he good enough to play this role? Now, if when we, when we have a deep line forward, what are we looking for? We're looking for somebody who's got the strength to hold up the ball, the vision to see the pass and to do something with it. Of course, we want him to be able to score as well. Um, concentration is not really an important criteria for a player who's a DL, uh, deep line forward because he's not going to be in a situation where he's going to be caught offside a lot. right? And we're looking at this, he's off the ball is isn't fantastic you know off the ball is a pretty important trait for a striker especially if it's a dlf think of players like jamie vardy think of players who are always moving around looking for space to receive the pass those players have got very good off the ball now he isn't he hasn't got fantastic off the ball so he's pretty much a very average i mean he's an average player for this role or subpar actually then we've got Tyrese John Jules. He's one of your best players in your club at the moment. He's scored the most goals. He's a star player. 
uh, and he's looking for a bigger challenge right now. But looking at his attributes alone, I probably would sell, let this guy go. I wouldn't hesitate to let him go because if he wants a big challenge, I'll go like, please go because he's a fantastic target, man. He's very good in the air. You should be using, utilizing him to you know, create chances for other players. And if he, he, he's going to be a very good player in a two-man setup where he is actually the deep line forward or he's going to be the player that... This is where, you know, I prefer him as my deep line forward as opposed to the first option, right? The only reason why he's not probably given... Uh, the, yeah, the, the algorithm says it's not him is probably because his passing is a bit weaker. Then we've got another player called Oka4 and we have pretty average as well. So if you're looking at... This is the 4231 DM. The reason why we want to have a, a tool like this is because... You can actually come in here and remove all these players. So you kind of know how many players you have for your tactic, right? So let's assume that you want to play something that's pretty simple, like a 4-3-3, right? This, this tactic is like easy to master in the long run, or maybe even a 4-4-2 DM, uh, which is a counter-attacking tactic. So let's try this 4-3-3. So the easiest way is to come here, and then what you're going to do is, okay, who is who is the advance forward? We, when you play advance forward, you need somebody who's got acceleration. Right, so you've got to advance forward and we're looking at all your players. Your Tyrese John Jules is about the best option that we have. 13-14, he's got good off the ball. His acceleration is strong in the air. He's going to be able to beat players. Okay, so we know that we want Mr. Tyrese to be our number one strike option. We've got other players here called like Ricky J. Jones. Well, push comes to shove, you'll probably combine these two together into a, a two-man strike force with probably B. Broby as the third option in this. He can also play as the third option. The only reason why I didn't like him as an, uh, one of the options is because his off the ball isn't fantastic. So if you've got these two who can form a two-man strike partnership that you can, you know, we can work, we can uh, do something with. So we'll, we remove these two players to just leave this in. So these become our striker options. Now, th these three players, the names are going to be removed from here. So we've got uh, T. Jones, T. Jones, Jules is removed from here. Then we've got R. Jones, we're going to remove his name from here. So all these players are removed. Now, do we have any of these names appearing here? This is one way that you can check your depth out. It allows you to arrange things so that you know who are the players. So we've got Ebris Easy. I like Easy. <laughs> uh, he's an inside for play, playing on the left side. He can come in. Well, this guy's got the... He doesn't have... A lot of acceleration, right? But at the moment, the best option that we have in the club. Then we've got Greg Hilson, another player. He's an AMC. Can play on his right foot. Has the traits. Knocks ball past before uh, opponents hanging. Come inside. So we've got two options. We've got Mr. Jack Grealish. That's our third option. He's not very fast anymore. Uh, definitely somebody who can, you know, doesn't have much of a future, right? So he's getting on in age. And then we've got Noah Okafor, who is basically a winger if he's playing on this side. I mean, he's okay, he's dribbling, he's crossing, his finishing is not that fantastic. He's 28 years old. Uh, he's going to be just here to fill up the spaces because he's not that good. And then we got uh, Hasic uh, at AMC. He's got low bravery, low concentration, can't break the outside trap. Nothing too fantastic about him. He's probably... Yeah, we can use it. We can probably use him as a inverter wing on the other side, but he's got low bravery and low concentration. So he's while he's fantastic with pace, gets caught offside. Uh and well, he's just a creative option going forward. So we've got him as a first choice. So we've got Emwepu, he's a right footer on the right side as an inverter winger, is not really gonna cut it. He's can't even cross the ball, he can't do jack shit. So he's out. <laughs> then we've got Oka four. Um, right footed on the other side well basically he can't cross the ball he can only dribble and when he gets there he can't score so I mean I probably would not rate this player very high yeah, he ain't much of an option so you got one player these two are, I mean I wouldn't bother with these two we got a breeze easy he's playing on the other side as the first choice then we got Greg Hilson okay at least this guy he might be an option if he has got two good feet if he's got two good feet, he can be a striker. Right, reasonable. Okay, that's it.
we got one at least he can play on the right side as an inside forward. What it was, you know. I mean, it's not ideal, but it's not much of an option. This guy, we're gonna take him out. He's the one of the players. They've got Jack Grealish. Uh, well, push comes to shove. Yeah, I guess we can use Jack Grealish here as an inside forward. Then we got Romeo Lavia, so he's not gonna be playing here. Uh, Broby. Yeah, we can use Broby. If we have, if we go with one of these guys up front, then you know Broby can play here as well. Then once you get here, it, all you need to know is whether you got three players here. Right, so we got Mwepu. Okay, average player can go forward. Does he have flair to unlock teams? Can he dribble? No. All right, he's out. So we're not going to use him. He can be a ball winner, maybe a Carrello. Dobson, can he go forward and do something with the ball? Yes. Okay, good. He's got flair. He's got decisions. Ezri Konza, ball winner, passing. Tackling, positioning, brilliant. This guy can win balls for us. He's a ball winner or a Carrillo. So he can either sit as, he can either protect us in front or he can create. Now all we want to do is, we already got two players. All we need to define is one player who can pass and make things happen. Well, great Hilson, if he's not playing in front, he can play behind. Right, so we've got several options here. Uh, yes, definitely now. Passing, vision, decisions, we've got some flag. All right, so we've got three players. So you're rich in midfield. You can, you have so many options in attack. So this tells me that your team has got a lot of options. You can play a 4-2-3-1, you can play a 4-4-2, or you can play a 4-3-3. The question here isn't what tactic is right for you. The question here is whether you can stick to a formation long enough for you to get the best out of your players. There's so many ways to set up a 4-3-3. Right. You can have like a um, winger base 4 3 3, and then you get this guy dropping off, and all you do is you drive it teams. Option B, you can have somebody punching through the middle. And then option C is you have these two guys acting like a screen, and then you've got this playmaker from the back, you know, quarterbacking uh, setup that is played for a mid block. 4 3 3 there are so many ways of playing a 4 3 3. You sh there's no one best way. And then you've got simpler systems like the 4-2-2, which is uh, my recommendation for most people because it's a two-man strike force that gets forward. You're playing off a mid-block and you're trying to hit teams on the break. you got DMD. You got, this is, there is not too much ambition in this because you got a basic setup where you're soaking and then you're hitting on the break, expecting these guys to do most of the work. I like the inverted winger being here. And then the winger is just bombing down this way. you got a wing back that might go around occasionally. There's nothing wrong with this tactic, right? I mean, you might want to think about maybe this by this player becoming a wing back, you know, pushing up the pitch. Uh, you got a ball playing defender against the dot and defensive midfield here. That's that's really fine. A DLF playing off a, on an inverter winger that drives this way, and then you know you might have a poacher staying in and around the box of players to get the ball to. There's nothing wrong with this tactic. It's actually quite okay. And then with this tactic, we've got an advanced forward, inside forward, attacking this way. This guy looking to create chances uh, for these two players with a deep line playmaker here, DRP. This is a possession-centric tactic, right? You, you will create chances for... You might create chances if you're patient enough to move a team around and, you know, try and create uh, situations where you are pulling them to one side of the pitch to create goal-scoring chances for you. I mean, this can work. And then if, you know, you want to move, apply more pressure, it's a question of whether or not uh, maybe you might want to turn this guy into a central if you know, attack, punching this way. Maybe you get this guy to be an inverter wing on attack and then you add start adding overlaps to get your players even higher up the pitch. And finally, we've got a 4-2-3-1 DM. Now, this is a bit, this tactic is a bit strange. Uh, whenever I see a 4-2-3-1 DM, which is, like this DLF and then Shadow Strike. What you're trying to do is you, you got all these players sitting back, you got one guy hoofing the ball up, and then you just got these two guys trying to do something with this inside for I, I wouldn't there's this is not a park the bus tactic. Uh, you want to do a park the bus tactic, let's do a proper park the bus, right? Like just go. This is this is what I call a proper park the bus. Yeah, you you want to park the bus, park it in style. You know, all you gotta do is maybe have like you can you can do it this way. I mean, there's so many ways to park the bus. Okay, you can do it like this. 
parking the bus. Uh, you can park the bus like this. This is parking the bus. All, right. all you got is you got a whole bunch of players. Here. You got five at the back. You got one DM. All you need is for this guy to become a wing back. He's just gonna bomb up the pitch, and the guy bombs out the pitch. And then you got you got a DM on defense or even an anchor man back there. You got a back four here that isn't moving, and this guy just bombs up the pitch when you have the ball. This guy, and then you've got this bunch of players up for uh forward, high up on the pitch waiting for the counter attack. You got one winger on the tank. And then you might have an inverter winger on support. Uh, again, inverter winger on support. And then this guy can be just an AM on support. Now, all he does is wait for the players. He can put a tall player here who's got strength. All you're doing is parking the bus and hoping to do the counter. So you've got these four guys here not going very high up the pitch. You play with a standard defensive line. And you can play with a much lower line of engagement. So all these guys drop and then you're being as defensive as possible. So there are many ways of creating park the bus systems. Uh, you can do it like this. You can even do a double here. And I mean, if you really wanted to, this will be another option for you. Like here, these wing backs are the ones popping forward like this. And then you've got to send uh, players from the center. I mean, especially if you've got an AI that's not coming at you with uh, wingers, then this is another option that you can choose. The challenge when you're playing a 4 3 3 is you need, you need pace. Now, if I were to do a quick pick on just your players here, Grealish is the one recommended choice for the inside forward on this position. And I still think that this is way too slow for us because we want somebody who's a lot faster and who's playing on this side of the pitch and coming on his right foot. Uh, we've got this player. I'll probably start my matches with Ricky J. Jones instead of Grealish. And then I've got Chuka Wemenka, who's a DM on C, is a box-to-box. -box. I probably want somebody a bit more aggressive in this position, but box-to-box -box -box is okay, I guess. And then a DLP, this plays on support for most of the game, but uh, it's passing vision and decisions. Well, I mean, ideally, it should be somebody who can win the ball, but... If we're going to abuse him, I'll probably use him more like a central midfielder on the tank. So come from this position because we don't have a, we don't need to have a, a doorstop here like a DLP at the moment. We, we could ideally get, you know, if we, we can, let's get a, a DLP on support. But, you know, this player is just better off as a central midfielder on the tank right? instead of a DLP on support because he can't really tackle. And then we got George Dobson. George Dobson, passing is 12, vision is 12, and Clay is 13. I mean, he's 31 years old. He's probably a very average uh, uh, DLP. And if I wanted to, then I'll just use him as a DLP on support. And then we've got these players, and this is how it's set up. More as a DM, well, he's okay as a ball winner or a DM. And then we've got Casanova, Consa. Consa as a, as a jumping reach. Well... You're, you're, there's not a lot of height in this defense. Philip Walpole will use him as a defender. And uh, we've got Vanny Baptista. We've got the other defender here. And this is how I'm going to set up for my first game. And because it's my first game, I'm just going to regroup. I, just, I don't know. I don't want to lose the ball unnecessarily. Uh, we want to keep the ball. I want, to, I want to try and keep the ball when I kick off, right? Because I'm not too sure. It's, I've never played this team before. We're playing Liverpool at home. So we could easily end up losing this match if I'm too ambitious with the, with the ball. So against Liverpool, what we're going to do is we aim to keep possession of the ball. All right. So here we go. No team talk given. And we're off. We've got Liverpool trying to get inside. They're not doing very well. That's us on the counter. Uh, 
Liverpool are actually playing with a two-man midfield, right? This if this is a support duty, what I would do is I'll start aggressively putting pressure in midfield. I would change my rules. So I'm gonna have this guy become a ball winning midfield on support. I'm gonna have this guy become a central midfield on support. And this guy becomes a DM. So we'll put a bit more pressure on this Mazala DLP combination that they have. Um, we got to throw Casanova inside the box and we get ourselves the early breakthrough. Okay, it's not too bad. Passage to Casanova. Casanova puts the ball into Enrique J. Jones, of course. Yeah, we got Papetti, Virgil, Van Dyke. Chiesa tries to get in. We do well. Putting, still putting pressure on them. There we go. The second breakthrough, and it's a second goal. Tyrese John Jules has added two to the day. The idea here is to also make sure that we have roles in midfield that put pressure on that creative fulcrum that Liverpool have in the centre of the park. We've got a DLP Mazala combination and the numbers, our, we change our roles just so that we can put a lot more pressure on that, that axis. So we just went with a ball winning midfielder and a central midfielder on support. Okay. So, John Felix, uh, we got Alexander Isak, Walpole. No, this is good defending from our boys. Now they have to change to Cook Minus. Alright. This, this option is not going to work for us. This, we need to make a change. There's no way we can carry on with these players. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take our... Uh, we're going to put on Roberts. Oliveira is a fullback that should be taken off. Casanova will take him off for Ezri Konza. Alright. So, we're trying to keep things as simple as possible, right? Alexander Isak gets away. Put minus. Not doing too badly. Papetti, oh no, good good work from our boys. Brahim, good defending. Okay, this uh, Mazala is giving us some trouble. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to opposition instructions. Put minus, we're going to tackle him hard. And we're going to show him onto his weaker foot. And we're going to press him as well. Just a simple use of the OI to reduce the influence of this player. And it's gone from 6.8 to 6.7. The moment we finish with the OIs, his numbers dropped. Okay, now all we got to do, it's pretty simple. We'll, uh, we're just going to time waste. Okay. You have the players to play well. Yeah. And Villa have beaten Liverpool 2-0. And what did we do? Um, we did something really simple. We stuck to one formation, but we we changed things in the middle of the game. We started with BBM DLP, but the moment we saw that Liverpool was playing with a 4-2-3-1 where they had these uh, the a setup where they had a Mazala and a playmaker, we just changed our roles in midfield because uh, we we can put two now and just go to work in the center of the park and reduce their influence. If we can take out the 4 2 3 ones, uh, central midfield partnership, we might have a chance. Tactically, I didn't change very much. It was a case of looking at your players and trying to identify the right players to play in that system. I think at the end of the day, you just have to master the one formation to give you the options. Um, a 4 3 3 isn't that difficult, but you know, sometimes people can be too rigid in the application of the 4 3 3 or any of these formations. You can definitely change things around in the game 
with your formation if you want to, you know, get one over the AI. Well, I hope you enjoyed this edition of Game Changer and Funny Useful. If you have any more questions, you know where to find me. And uh, yes, have a bit of faith. You guys take care. Have a good one. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.